Hey, welcome back. So we've looked at so many different ways of controlling our generations now. We've looked at the prompt, first of all, uh, but then in episode two here, we've looked at how the number of steps affects things, obviously how uh, the different seeds are, create totally different results. We've looked at the guidance scale, and there's one last choice for uh, impacting what our, our generation looks like given these other settings, and that's the sampler. So the good news with the sampler is that I don't think it's worth playing with the choice of sampler that much. And I think that's good news because we already have so many different knobs to turn that it's a little overwhelming and we wanna be able to focus on the choices that are gonna have the most interesting impact on our results. So I think it's kinda of nice that we can actually simplify the choice of sampler a lot. And if I wanted to make this video just like two minutes long, then um, what I would tell you is just that you should try out both Euler and DPM++ 2M Keras. <laughs> I think if you stick with these two, especially when you're starting out, I think that's enough. And I do think they're both worth trying, which I think is, is an interesting point. Um, but I think just these two is, is enough. So. Uh, another really popular choice is uh, Euler A. Um, and I've actually chosen to actively you know, not pick that sampler and I'll explain why in this video. Um, and yeah, I'll also go through the, the choice of samplers and, and give you some insight into uh, what, why there are so many choices and um, I guess why we can, we can kind of narrow it down to these two. All right, here we go. Here in our favorite image generation tool, the sampling method is right up here next to the sampling steps. And it's a drop down box that gives us a whole bunch of options. And I will kind of group these, categorize them over the course of this video. Uh, but first, let's talk about why, what these samplers are doing and why there's so many choices. So remember that diffusion happens by the model denoising the image over multiple steps. And the whole point of the, the sampler is uh, trying to get to the resulting image, to this guy, <laughs> in as few steps as possible. So this, this giant list is here because these are all different ways of trying to reduce the number of steps required. The samplers were always a little baffling to me for a long time because it's kind of crazy that they could have such an impact. Um, stable diffusion is this enormous neural network that requires a huge amount of compute power to predict the noise to remove between each of these steps. And then the, the sampler is just this step that does a little bit of extra math relative to the network that decides uh, the final things to do before actually applying the noise update. And all of those sampler choices use the same, same underlying neural network. They didn't have to retrain the, the neural net for each of the different samplers. So it's kind of crazy to think that a relatively small part of the process could have such an impact on how quickly you can run this, this whole uh, entire process. So what's going on here is that all of these different options are examples of what's called a, uh, a solver for ordinary differential equations or ODEs. And don't need to know what that is, um, but, they, but let me give you kind of a, an analogy or a metaphor that I heard recently that I liked for helping understand what these are doing and why they could have such an impact. So imagine that you're in the mountains on a slope somewhere and you're trying to get down to the bottom of the valley where there's like a, a ski lodge or the parking lot or something. Um, here at the bottom of this image, it's a lake, but uh, it'd be more ideal if it was is just kind of a bowl at the bottom. So let's let's pretend that's what's going on here. And the 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 destination at the bottom uh, in this analogy, that's the that's the final image that we're we're going towards. That's where we're trying to reach is our fully cleaned up image. And we're trying to get down there in as few steps as possible. So let's say that, um, right, so we're in the mountains and there's a blizzard. So all we can see is the ground immediately underneath us. 
And we've got a, um, this teleportation device with us. And the way the, the device works is that we, we put in a direction that we want to travel in and a distance. And then we hit a button and it will teleport us to uh, wherever that, that takes us. So because of the blizzard, all we can do is look at the ground under our feet and look at the slope of the ground. And really what the slope tells us is which direction to travel in that's going to take us the most downward. So let's say at this point in the mountain, the slope is kind of pointing that direction. So obviously the, the distance we travel is going to be really important because if we try to take too big of a step, too greedy of a step, we could end up just sort of bouncing around the, the rim of the, the valley instead of ever making it down. So let's say we, we took this big long step and ended up over here. And then that looks like it's pointing in that direction, maybe a little further down, but it's all right. Uh, and then we take another big step and that, that takes us over here, right? We just totally overshoot the bottom. So taking more modest step sizes is, is going to be part of the answer here. Um, Taking modest steps in the direction of the slope is an approach called Euler's method. It's the, the simplest, most intuitive approach to solving this problem. It's named after Leonard Euler, who wrote about it in 1768. So this is a very classical math, math, uh, problem in math that uh, you know, is, not, is not new to diffusers. Uh, we can get one example of how you could get more clever about this is we could try taking a step and then look at the slope at the at the new destination and then essentially average the two to try uh, getting a little more accurate and that that would be you know that would be a good strategy in this particular situation and that's that's called a second order solver um, and it's Hune's method in the in the list the rest of the solutions other than lms are specific to solving diffusion models. And so they take advantage of some additional uh, insights from, from that specific context. I don't know how they work, so I can't offer any more intuition than that. But hopefully this, is, this gives us a good, uh, some intuition about how the sampler could actually have such a big impact on, on how quickly we solve this. So now I can start kind of grouping these, these samplers for us. So these guys, Euler, LMS, and Hune, these are all classic mathematical methods. And the rest are all more specific to diffusion models. These two are sort of original methods that uh, try to do it quicker than, than Euler's. Um, people will say these have kind of been replaced by newer, more efficient techniques. The main one is DPM, which, which stands for Diffusion Probabilistic Model Solver. And that's, that's what all these DPM ones are. And then Keras is the name of an author who published a paper that made an argument that there's kind of this fundamental change um, needed in uh, the sampler technique and in how noise is removed. So there's a lot of duplicates here, you'll notice. There's a, there's a Keras version of um, most of these samplers. And we'll look at the difference between, so this is ultimately the choice we wanna make here, DPM++ 2M. And we'll look, we'll look a little bit about, at the difference between that and the, and the Keras version. Um, I do think the Keras version after after the experimentation I've done, I think the, the Keras version does seem a little better. Uh, and that's kind of the, the one I'm, I'm defaulting to now, that and Euler. So one thing to note is that almost all of these samplers are, they're all heading towards that, that same ski lodge at the bottom of the valley. So they're all kind of going to generate roughly the same image in the end. Um, which is nice. That kind of tells you that these samplers, they're not going to produce wildly different results for you. The exception are these ancestral samplers. Uh, and those are the ones that have an A at the end here. Uh, Euler A being the maybe the most popular. These have some randomness added to them that... I'm going to I'm going to show in some examples why I think it's maybe 
uh, it's tempting to play with, but I think it's it's worth avoiding, honestly. Um, similarly, this guy, DPM++ SDE, has some randomness and UniPC as well. So those, those are gonna produce different results. So for the rest of the video, I've got some examples for us to look at in a little more detail, and I'll also show you the kind of the issue uh, with the ancestral samplers. So here we've got Euler on the left and uh, DPM++ 2M on the right. And at the extreme ends, uh, at five steps, neither of them are really producing something that looks like the result. At 10, they're both producing something reasonable that, that's giving some indication of where the generation is, is heading or what it might look like at a higher number of steps. But clearly DPM gives you this, this more detailed looking preview uh, than Euler. And if you go all the way to 100 steps, then the outputs seem to be nearly identical. I, I looked at these for differences and you know they, they seem very similar so they're they are kind of heading in the in the same uh to the same place eventually and and the distinction is kind of like what what the results look like uh, at intermediate step count values so we've got another version of of that these are the more more intermediate values um and then here's uh uh dpm with with the with the Keras fix and without it to to see what that's doing. So I think what's interesting about DPM uh, versus Euler is that Euler has this kind of nice quality of producing relatively soft images at lower step counts. So I actually really like this generation, for example, um, and. What DPM seems to do is that even from, from very low step counts, as we saw with like 10 steps, it produces these images that have high local contrast. So if we kind of zoom in on these details, uh, local contrast means like if you look at an edge, wherever there's a boundary between two things, the contrast is higher. So like this rim here, it's very bright here, very dark here. Um, but lower contrast here. And so that, that creates this sense of, of DPM producing these more like higher detailed images. Uh, but I don't know that that's entirely correct. And I don't know that it's better because <laughs> you know, it, it does, sometimes it just means accentuating details that are, that are wrong, right? Because stable diffusion often produces uh, uh, less than sensical details. <laughs> So it does produce images that in a way look like, oh yeah, at a glance that seems just superior because it's, uh, it's got more definition to it. But uh, sometimes I think the, the softer results are, are actually more desirable. Um, yeah, and then it does seem like DPM kind of reaches its destination um, at maybe 30 steps, right? There's not a, a lot of difference, I don't think, between 30 and 50 here. And then as far as the Keras variant, it seems a little softer, I like that. Um, I think maybe some of the other examples that I have to share show some, some distinction. Clearly though, there's, there's not a ton and it's probably because they do arrive at their at their destination pretty quickly, uh, the differences are probably more at these lower step counts. Yeah, and I think comparing these two at 15 steps, I, I do like the, the Keras fix version a little better. Not quite as, as high definition. So again, I think the advantage that Euler has over DPM is that you can actually reduce the steps to create a softer image, and that might actually be more desirable than the high step count image. Uh, and then this is kind of this is true in another way for these these samplers that add randomness. So Euler A is a popular one, and then DPM SDE is another popular one. So these you can see are heading in a different direction. They end up uh, at a different ski lodge or <laughs> at a ranger station somewhere else. So you get to a different image than um, uh, the standard. You get to a different image. <laughs> And 
that's that can be cool because you know more variety is fun but take a look at what happens so this is 15 steps it's like okay that's kind of interesting it's it's a little it's a little messy it's a little broken so maybe some more steps would fix it well no what's going to happen with these these more randomized samplers is you're going to get a pretty different image so now we're at 25 steps and instead of like a more resolved version of this you've actually ended up in a completely different place um, and we've got a pretty cool image here but uh, it's you know it, it's a little more flawed i feel like um and uh you know we already have different ways of of creating randomness right we have the random seed we have the ability to tweak our prompts so if all you're after is just new interpretations of the same thing. I think we already have some good tools for that. And as cool as these are, um, I think the fact that it's not converging on a, on a single uh, resulting image is, is kind of a problem. It limits your ability to play with the step count. Um, and I think, it, I think it's best, honestly, just to kind of to stick with Euler and DPM. And if you want more variety, try different seeds and, and that kind of thing. In addition to that ability to generate softer images, sometimes the, the details in the, the final image, uh, maybe we don't like them. <laughs> so in this one, um, apparently we're heading towards this image with uh, a man standing here that doesn't really make sense and, and kind of a strange shape here, a person on top of this rock. Um, however, if you do fewer steps with Euler, then this object remains sort of like a standing rock, which makes more sense. And this, uh, this strange figure on the top of the hill isn't there. So uh, that's another reason why I think Euler with few, fewer steps can be appealing. Here's an example with a custom model called Deliberate. And if you're trying to do character portraits, then I think these uh, custom models are, are some of the best ways to do that. Um, here, the, the difference between char the Keras fix seems to be more significant, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Keras definitely seems like the, the better choice here. And again, something I like about Euler is that we seem to be heading towards an image where there's um, some kind of uh, guy sitting here in the corner and you know i don't really like that <laughs> whereas euler has uh um just creates some some kind of you know strange object on the counter there instead so uh, i like this generation here and i feel like it might be uh more desirable than where the where the generation is actually heading Here's one last example of a boat, again, with that deliberate model, the custom one. So hopefully you've got kind of a handle on why there's so many different samplers and, and what you're really choosing between there. And I'm hoping also that I've kind of simplified it for you in, in highlighting that really there's, there's it's, it works really well to, to use Euler first of all, and then maybe uh, DPM++2M as well.